He's got shit on his face. It's black hoodie. I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. Is it weird that I like to zip my hoodie up real tight like this because it makes my face more almond shaped? Like, and then you undo it and you're like, oh, really? You're just like Dublin? But then you like you're it. You're first you're Ireland, Dublin, and then then you're like almond milk and cute and shit. You know what I mean? You, you know what I'm trying to say. The sun's coming out. It'll come out tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day. As it does, because time's fake and the only time that exists is now. Ten minutes from now, it's going to be now. When you go to bed, it's, it's now. And then when you wake up, it's now because you're always here. Even when you're sleeping, you're always here. You just don't know it. But then it's now and then later on, it's now and it's always now. So it's called the present. But anyways, that aside, philosophy aside, <laughs> we all know that it's happened a lot around here. Whoppers. But my last Whopper video was three and a half months ago. And I need them because they're a classic crave. They're a classic crave in my kit. That's what this channel has devolved into. A guy who goes and does errands and eats classic craves and says nothing of real value along the way. <laughs> he just does it anyways. But he does have a Tinder story today. And it's recent. And it's funny. And it's good. So we're going to go. It's Whopper time. Two for nine. It's the best deal. The hottest deal around town. Because it's daily. It's a daily deal. And with food prices these days, to get two big old burgers for nine bones in here up in Canada is, uh, that's unheard of actually, because uh, uh, a Big Mac alone is something like seven eighty nine dollars or some shit like that. So two Whoppers every day for the price of nine. It's amazing. It's sunny. I need them. They're classic. And we have a story to tell. Okay, onward. Something I hate while driving pet fucking peeve is like you're at a, a side street, like you're on this side street, somebody's on the other side street, you're going across a major main street, yes. And then there's one person who's coming straight and you let them go, like the, it's their turn and you're on this side going straight. But then the next person who's up next, which is technically it's their turn to go, they have the left turn signal on and then I'm like waiting for them to go because it's their time to go because it's a it's a exchange. It's you go, I go, you go, I go in that scenario. So they're technically first in line to make the turn, but they're just sitting there being like, no, you're going straight, so I'm turning, so you go. And I'm like, no, 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 but you're like, you're in line, like it's your turn to turn. And that's why I'm not gonna go because if you just kept letting the people go straight go, you'd never get to go. So that's why we have a system of give and go, right? So, you know, ah, shit, the world. But, okay. Anyways, the, the person was like, not going, so I went and they seemed fine with it. Which is cool, like, I, 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 I understand the extension of the courtesy, but like, you're actually causing me more mental stress because you're not following the rules the road, you know? So, figure it out. <laughs> yeah, my belt was beeping at me, but it did just get really nice. It was shit all day, and now it's 7.15, and it's fucking beautiful outside. And he himself is slowly coming back to himself, it feels like, day by day by day. We're getting further away from the trauma, <laughs> from the event horizon, and uh, we're letting it go. We're coming back. We're becoming more centered, we're finding our identity, we're getting focused, we're looking at what's next, and what's next really is Whoppers, two, two of them, we know this, uh, and the line is looking good, only two cars in there, sweet, actually, you know what, I'm gonna run in, because here's the thing, every time I run in and order the heavy all, it's almost like they come out so much better, because the pressure's on of like the in-person customer service, like they know I could maybe get hot at them if it wasn't up to my standard par. But when you're in the drive-thru, they just kind of do it how whatever, because they know they can like stuff it in your bag, stuff it in the hand and you drive away and there's unlikely that you're gonna like be say anything. But if you're inside, you can like observe them make it. So they always kind of do it doper. So we're going inside and uh, we'll be back. And he's talking a lot in this one. Where is he gonna park? The sun is coming at a weird angle right now. 
don't really know how to negotiate the sun. We're at a we're on a five o'clock shadow. How's that gonna work? It's like burning my fucking eyes from the side. I don't like this at all. Uh, okay, let's try something different. Ah, uh, I think we found it. <laughs> I don't know. Still not great. Still don't love it. If I tuck it in right about here. No, it's rough too. Fuck! I think I found, yay, hey, there it is. We got the big old signage cut. Oh, wait, no, don't get cocky. That it gotta be right there. That's it. Socks appeared, quite the mission inside. Uh, they were grace under fire. It was not, not going smooth in there, but uh, that's fine. I'm in no rush, we're all good. The, I do wanna unwrap them and add the fried onion rings to them. Uh, because the chick on till in there was new, I knew she was struggling. So I just said, like, I didn't do any, uh, I didn't omit anything. I just said heavy all. So we have regular onions on here, which I don't usually get, but we're going to leave them and we're going to load it with double onion, fried onion and raw onion. All right. I lied. I had to deconstruct and reconstruct. Buddy put all of the pickles literally in like a there's seven pickles, like in a stack in the middle and uh, way too many onions i just had to take some onions but we are still doing a double a double raw so let's get in for a bite we're on the zoom can we're on the good side you can see the details it's looking great though he's got shit on his face you can tell i can tell all right, she was super messy at the back too. I had to do a baby diaper bonnet. Now let's get into this, okay? <laughs> Holy crap. All right. Absolutely slapping. They mostly always do. Had to crack the window. Please don't mind a little bit of traffic noise. Juicy bites coming up. What else is juicy is this uh, Tinder story. <laughs> this little Tinderella story. It's pretty funny. And uh, it's ongoing. It's current. So your guys hopped on Tinder <laughs> and Bumble. Maybe a week ago. For shits and gigs. Just to see what's up. Just to see what's out there. <laughs> and I pretty much expect to do nothing really with it. But hey. Why not have a gander, a sneak peek, a preview of what's going on around here? So, I'm tindering around, swiping around, and I've got a bunch of matches, but on Tinder you can only see like if you really match. Uh, I don't know, it only gives you like so many or something like that because it always wants to prompt you to upgrade to gold. <laughs> Such a sloppy but good bite. Um, which fuck all that because I ain't paying to go gold and all that. I don't take it that seriously. So I'm running into like all these people from back in the day, back in the bar scene, chicks from high school, my sister. <laughs> and 
Gotcha. I get a couple me few matches. I'm I'm uh, chatting to people. And this one chick, she uh, she matches and she messages immediately, but she has like an incognito name. It's not like a real name. It's like a just a screen name, a little screen handle. I mean, she's decent. So I reply back. We start having some banter and then whipping through her profile pics. And I'm like, oh shit. I recognize this shit. I know her name and everything. She doesn't know that I know this. She doesn't recognize me. <laughs> so I'm playing the flirt game, just d deciding when I'm gonna drop the bomb. But she was basically graduating high school pretty much or going into grade 12 when I was in grade eight. So back then, that's straight up cradle robber shit. But now that we're both older, it's fair game, right? <laughs> Round two coming in hot. So anyways, things are spicing up between us. We're having uh, a lot of sexual innuendo. Uh, <laughs> we're talking about like certain things, but really we're talking about having sex <laughs> right off the bat. <laughs> But she doesn't know that I know that. And then um, I say something like, oh, that's too bad. Like, I'm really good at cooking and chilling. So you're lost or whatever. Because she's only looking for a summer fling. She doesn't want winter. She's like, at winter, we pretend like we don't know each other. <laughs> Which is funny. Uh, I appreciate the honesty. <laughs> and then uh, she goes... She responds like, no worries anyways, I creeped your Instagram. <laughs> like the old lady that I am and I realized I used to be friends with your sister and I used to have sleepovers at your mom's house in high school and uh, all that shit. And then she's like, but damn, you're cute now. <laughs> and uh, I was like, I know. And then I said her, her, her real name. I was like, I didn't recognize you at first, but then I kind of did some searching in the mind and a little bit of scrolling. I was like, wait a minute. I know exactly who that is. And I remember you from like when I was a kid. They were slapping today. So I was like, <laughs> you think my sister hasn't creeped on some of my guy friends from my age group? And then, I'm like, we're old now. It's all fair game. It doesn't matter. She goes, oh, yeah, that's a classic one. Bent over by my uh, previous friend's younger brother. And then she goes... It is kind of a fantasy of mine. I like to be the older player. I like to be the older woman and show you what to do like you don't know how. <laughs> and I was like, I, I could get into a role play. <laughs> These bites are just too perfect on this one.
actual juicy. So now we're getting real sexual in, in the in the in the conversation, like very forward. So this is yesterday. So it's on the table. <laughs> And I could put it in the pocket if I was up for it, I feel as if. So, uh, I don't know. She's breaking the sheets. She's down. She's the older woman. She wants casual. And there's a funny history about it. I don't know if I need to get into all that. <laughs> you know? I'm on the fence because I am a little sexually frustrated. I'm not going to lie been rough living here in that department I am very bored in that area of my life <laughs> maybe something I just may have to entertain <laughs> Which would make for a good progressional story time. The next layer. The next chapter. The next layer. <laughs> the next chapter. So, I don't know. Y'all can give me advice down below. But it's a serious consideration at this point. I can tell you that. All right, very messy. <laughs> I, it literally just fell onto my, like, I was sitting there with it clutch and it just fell into me. All right, a little bit hectic, messy, burger fell into me, a little hot, gets sweaty. It, it's nice out now, so when you're eating in the car, I don't want to put the window down because then it's like loud and shit, but then it's like, I need airflow, so it's tricky. Um, and, uh, you know, we're on the fence about some, some role-playing, casual, Thanks. But I gotta do laundry tonight anyways, so that's good. I'm doing a bunch of that tonight. That guy's doing what he's doing. And uh yeah, <laughs> let me know. Till the next one. And maybe something will happen between then and now. I don't know. Eat good, live well. <laughs> Stay true.